to another episode of the Independent Mindset, the podcast for candid conversations, staying curious, and being better. Uh, Jason, today we're going to uh, we're going to give some tips and tricks for nailing your next job interview. And in fact, uh, Jason's got quite uh, Jason's a manager now, so he's got quite a bit of experience in uh, that sort of thing and, and hiring some folks. Um, but first, what's uh, what's new, man? Uh, just uh, another busy week, yeah, but uh, weather's starting to warm up, so now it's working a little bit more outside. Going to get some landscaping done and a few big projects there that are just about to get started. And uh, as the summer goes, I'm looking forward to, to seeing uh, that project flourish. How about yourself? Yeah, same. Uh, it's it's finally nice that it rained for like the last week, but uh, that means all the, the plants and flowers are out and something uh, <laughs> that I've, now that I kind of own a, a house like you, it's uh kind of therapeutic to really work on the the greenery in and around your house so you know planted uh worked on some garden boxes filled those up last weekend planted some trees and some vines in there hopefully get some to grow uh grow along the house that kind of stuff so it's kind of nice uh uh it's a nice part of the mental diet actually yeah and that's what we're working on right now same thing i i took a half hour or so went out for a little walk and then uh it's going to hit the gym there not too, too long and um, yeah, working away at that. And uh, actually yesterday I was driving around and one of the challenges for the mental diet is no news. And without noticing, <laughs> I already had my radio tuned to, to the news channel. I was like, wait, why am I getting upset? I was like, oh yeah, right. I'm not supposed to be listening to this. So I went and switched it off. Oh, you were actually getting upset from listening, like hearing what you were listening to. Yeah, the like topic it, was. <laughs> I already had it like auto tuned onto that, that channel of the of the radio without realizing and then like 10 minutes in i was like oh and then it, then it hit me i was like oh yeah right i'm not even supposed to have this on so i just flicked it off and kept on going wild guess was it cbc <laughs> you wild guess is correct ah i wonder why you felt so bad <laughs> yeah i've been i've been pretty good for the audience there that uh because because this episode will come out first we're in the middle of trying the mental diet cleanse or or fast so um uh, so Emily, our social media guru, gave us a bunch of rules on how to uh, basically cut out uh, all sorts of negative stuff for uh, for your psyche for the week. And uh, and next week we're going to talk about our results and how uh, wh- how well we did and how well we we felt uh, after a week of that cleanse. So I, I think I've been doing pretty well too. I, uh, I've been working out every day. I went for a run today. Um, that kind of stuff. So yeah. Uh, so before we uh, we get to the the nitty gritty to uh, the tips and tricks on how to nail a job interview, uh, Jason, our recurring segment called "Cancelled." Finish him. What will be canceled next? I'll tell you what. This one might not happen tomorrow, but uh, I, I bet you in the next fifteen, it's going to be there. Beef uh, takes a lot of space, takes a lot to feed so-called emissions from from cows whatever proportion that actually is um i bet you in you know a handful of years it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those things that's gonna be very much frowned upon to to purchase or be far too expensive for the average person to buy yeah i actually think that's a really good guess in fact this week i saw i think it was epicurious or the big kind of cooking website and then recipes and that kind of stuff uh, announced that they will officially no longer be promoting any recipes or, or sharing anything that had that included beef. So there you go. I don't even think you're. I don't even think we're that far away. And maybe it'll be uh, replaced by insects, as we see uh, a push for that. Have you ever tried bugs? I have not. Other than like eight year old Jason, like curious and biting off the tail of a worm, but other than that, have not. <laughs> yeah, I've tried uh, barbecued cricket and chocolate covered crickets and they weren't bad because they were actually cooked Mm. like they're actually grilled so they're kind of like a i don't know it's kind of like a crispy peanut you know like those old-fashioned barbecue peanuts used to get in like a dispenser it's kind of like that except like a bit crunchier with legs okay (laughs) so it's it's not that bad yeah how about you what's getting canceled next uh i'll keep it simple i'm gonna go with uh student debt just it'll be canceled (laughs) it's gone (laughs) and it's gone yeah. Cancel all student debt. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep it at that. I, so, so J- I knew yeah. that that liberal arts degree was going to come in handy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least didn't drag yeah, exactly. me down. 
<laughs> so today uh, we're going to talk about job interviews and I'll, I'll let you start off because you have quite a bit of experience in this. Uh, I come from actually a, um, an organization that uh, did a pretty good job of hiring and promoting internally. Uh, they also did a good job of if you did or did not uh, succeed in an interview, they would actually, you could ask for like a, a post interview. You could ask for or for a debrief on how, how, why you did so well or why you did so poorly, why you didn't get the job. And now everything's kind of written down and it's got points to it. So uh, it's it's pretty easy for them to tell you exactly where you kind of missed out and you didn't get your points on on certain questions. So that has helped me out a lot throughout the years to, to learn a bit more about uh about how hiring is done and how you should be, how you should conduct yourself in an interview. But you recently have become a manager, so you do a lot of hiring. Uh, so, so maybe start off with that. Yeah, I probably do about a dozen interviews a week. So on the the hiring side of the table, and uh, you, you do get to see a lot. It is for for entry level positions, but you do see how some people prepare for the interviews, how some people don't, and, and you get a lot from from the verbal and the nonverbal, right? So it's kind of interesting to be on that side and have a larger sample size to kind of say, okay, these are the things that tend to do well. These are the things that, that tend to do poorly. But we'll, we'll get into the uh, the tips and tricks once we, we get into it. But there's a few things you might want to do before you go to the interview. And, uh, I, I, and I know there's nothing more annoying than applying to a bunch of jobs, knowing you, you'll probably never even get an interview for, for any of them. I've been there. You've been there. It's something that's just a pain in the butt, but it needs to be done. And one thing. And it takes hours, hours. It's, it's, there's no guarantee, right? You apply for a job and now it's a, you need a CV, you need a cover letter. And then all of that information you just wrote down, you need to put in the, their, their web system or whatever their program. It's just so tedious, right? To maybe never get a call back. Right. But one thing that happens if you do get a call back it's always after the job posting has come down. And I can guarantee you that one of the questions of the job or of the interview is going to be, can you tell me about the roles and responsibilities of this job? And all the information you need to answer that one was in the job description. So do yourself a favor. And when you're writing your the cover letters and all that stuff applying on the online portal, just highlight all the text, copy it and paste it to a Word document. And you'll have it all right there. So when you do get called for the interview, you'll just go through it once or twice and you're going to have all the roles and responsibilities right there, ready to go. Plus, it's a great way to kind of study that and then be able to develop potential questions that all relate to those roles and responsibilities, which is typically what a job interview is anyways. Yeah, exactly. And I've always found that when I haven't had a lot of people do this when I was hiring, but it's things that I've done when I was applying to jobs and I've always gotten good reactions from it is you too ask questions, you know, see about, let's say you're applying to, uh, I don't know, a, uh, a, a, an insurance position. You're like, okay, well, what's the territory that we cover? You know, are we, are we pigeonholed to, just commercial insurances, or can we do residential? Can we do different types of policies, you know, per liabilities, blah, blah, blah. Is there courses that we can take to, to further our, our knowledge? And whenever you start asking questions like that, you're going to really see the interviewer light up. Yeah, it shows that you have interest in, and care for the job that you may have, right? Uh, another tip before the interview for me is, be sure to research the organization you're hoping to join. So it's simple things like just looking up their website and checking out the current priorities or mission statement. That can go a long way. Just a couple minutes. Like what what are their priorities right now? Uh, a little story I have is I applied to this organization and I got a I got a call back saying, okay, we're going to set up a call with you for the your first essentially the first line of interviews. And I had a friend who had applied about a year before at the same organization and was now working there. He, he had successfully gotten the job. And so I kind of asked him for tips and tricks. And he said, oh, the first interview is an easy one. They basically just ask you personal questions, right? It's just a, it's a friendly conversation. You, you don't need to study because you don't really know what to study. It's just about yourself. Just answer honestly. Um, so I get the phone call. One of the first questions is, what are our current priorities? I had no clue. 
I had no clue because I sit, I didn't go to their website and look on their first or second page and check out their top priorities. So, uh, guess what? Did I get the call back? I did not. <laughs> so your friend kind of screwed you on that one. Yeah, I was, I was kind of pissed. I was like, dude, what the hell? I, uh, <laughs> I basically, you know, there were questions about content and about the organization itself. And he was like, oh, it wasn't the same when, when I got the call. But so that's why never rely on uh, anyone else. Do your homework, man. Yeah. Whether or not you're told this is how the interview is going to go. Like, no, just again, take a couple minutes and, and, and do that background research. Yeah. And it could be something if it's a, a publicly traded company, look at their earnings, look at their last quarterly report, look at their, their last year or two of financials. And uh, I remember once upon a time, I went to a, a group interview for a bank and, um, that was one of the things I brought up when they said, well, you know, what makes you want to work at, at this bank? And I could, and I could confidently say, well, your earnings year over year were so much higher, blah, blah, blah. I noticed that you're in your last quarter, you brought in X amount of dollars and I only see this in, in an upward trajectory and I want to be part of that. So you start saying things like that confidently where you actually put in some facts and then make them feel good by saying, I want to be part of it. And they're, they'll light up for that. Yeah, for sure. Right. That's what they want to do. They want to hire you because you're val. even though they're paying your salary. Well, they hire you because they see there's more value in having you work for them than them paying you that salary. Exactly. Yeah. And in some of those companies, often you'll be able to get uh, uh, quarterly shares or you'll be able to get a, 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 a share buying program where you'll be able to buy company shares at a discount. And that's kind of an incentive for you to, to keep on working and keep on going, you know, above and beyond, because you want to see your shares appreciate. You want to buy more shares at a discount and keep on having those and, and get that snowball. And after a right. while, you have accrued so many that you don't want to see the company fail at all. Yeah, they were doing that at the beginning with uh, with uh, Shopify. I don't know if they still do it, but imagine... Like the, have you seen the shares of Shopify? That is a really? company I do not understand. It just keeps on mooning. And I'm like, I, I've i never seen Shopify in real life. Like I know it's online sales, but I have no idea what they do. Is it Amazon? Is it like, what is a Shopify? Shopify is uh, not that I'm an expert, but basically they cre- they are the, they're, they're essentially kind of like a web service, I think. So they you basically run your website through Shopify. And I think they specialize in websites that, that sell things that sell products or services. Uh, and they, they've just blown up and they blew up even more this year because every, you know, brick and mortar store was closed. And, uh, so the, the online economy boomed, right? So their stocks are just flying. Yeah. They, it's just been going. And even before, uh, the whole pandemic thing, it was just upwards and upwards since last yeah. couple of years. The, uh, the last thing I'll say for the pre-interview for before the interview is, uh, check out, like check out reviews of the actual place of work. Uh, you, you never want to put all this hard, uh, work and time into a place that's just super toxic. So check on glass doors or, or, uh, Google employee reviews for things like that. Right. So I just checked shop. I know it's not the, the topic at hand, but I just checked Shopify. It has a yeah. PE ratio of 92. Which means Oof. that to touch $1 of profit, you have to invest $92. Typically, a healthy stock market is somewhere around 15 So, you know, not to say that they're overvalued, and that's only one quick little metric, but that's a red flag, let's say. I'm curious what Tesla's is, the, the PE ratio. <laughs> Are they even profitable? You need to be, you need to make money to even have a PE in the, to begin with. So probably not. I don't know. But yeah, long story short, if you're going to, to an interview, do a little bit of research. See if you want to go deeper, see who's on the board, see what some of their projects have been. You know, do a, a cursory glance, go through the website. You might even be able to, to, to pick out who your interviewer is going to be. Like sometimes on the job description, it'll say reporting to the director of whatever. And if you see on the invite that that director is there, you might be able to see what their role is. And if it's a large enough company, you might say, oh, so you're responsible for X, Y, Z. That's really interesting. Can you kind of tell me how you got there? And you relate that personally back to them and they'll like you a little bit for it. You'll, you're going to show interest into what they're doing on more on a personal and professional standpoint. And and you'll get points, you know, as you go for that. Right. 
So uh, what, what would be the, the first thing, uh, first tip to give during the interview? Well, if it's at Tesla, it's don't bring up their PE ratio because it's 710. There you go. I figured it'd be high. <laughs> that's insane. That's a little high. That's, that's the earnings per share. Yeah, earnings per share is a dollar and it's seven hundred dollars per share. So yeah, there you go. Jeez. It's uh so during the interview, uh, and we've had an episode on this, and maybe we'll I'll let you dive a little bit more on it, but it's proper attire. You know, dress dress the part. Uh, don't be you know, if it's not a suit and tie kind of place, maybe wear a sports coat. If it is a suit and tie kind of place, definitely wear it. If it's a jeans and t shirt place, still wear a dress shirt. Kind of go one level above whatever the the dress will be at the place and you won't be overdressed if anything you'll kind of be on par with the interviewers right um yeah exactly the two things i'll say is when in doubt always overdress right you can't really go wrong so at least a step above what you think is the casual thing to do in, in in that uh in that situation the other thing i'll say is you only get one first impression so the second you walk in, if you're disheveled, if you don't look put together, if you don't look like you care, uh, if you don't look proud, if you don't look like slightly like you know what you're doing, uh, then that's already that's already a notch uh, against you in the interview. Yeah, it, it will be. And so like you say, you only get the one shot to make a first impression. And there's a story that you told me. I'll, I'll, I'll let you tell it in more detail. But what's the first thing you do when you walk into the room? How are you going to greet the interviewers? You want to go into that one? Yeah, sure. So it's a little tricky right now in this virtual uh, in this virtual world and virtual times. But uh, I always, before beginning, uh, I make it my mission to shake hands uh, of each person in the room. So there could be two interviews and one HR person. Um, you know, most interviews I've been in, I have two to four people. Make sure you come in, shake all of their hands. Now times have changed. Uh, maybe it's virtual. Maybe next time it's in person, they won't want you to come close to them. <laughs> so at least make sure you acknowledge them. You make eye contact and say hi to them. Right? You can you can still do that online. Use their name. Look at them in the eyes, uh, and and uh, acknowledge that they're there and that you're you know thankful to be there. Uh, the yeah the the story is in my old organization. I, I got a job. I had applied and my, my boss who, my, who became my future boss, uh, for that specific job told me the reason, or at least some, uh, she told me two things that really stood out in the interview and why I got the job. The first thing she said, you were the only person, actually the only candidate who came in and shook everyone's hands before you started the interview. And the second thing is she said, you made us laugh during the interview. So that's another challenge I would give everybody is try and make your interviewers laugh. And it doesn't mean you have to be funny. And in fact, interviews can be pretty stressful. They can make you not really the, you know, the fun person you typically are. You could be an introvert. So this could be really difficult. So it doesn't have to be like a well-placed joke or anything like that. Maybe you're unable to do that. But it could simply make them smile, something to make them smile. Maybe it's a slight self-deprecating joke at, at your expense or anything like that. That will absolutely help break the ice. And them remembering you as not just a guy who's regurgitating facts, right? They're like, oh, he's actually a person that's got a personality that I wouldn't mind sitting next to in a meeting. And here's the thing. That's what happens when it comes to an interview. Everyone who walks in before or after you to go speak with these interviewers, you're all on equal footing. You all have the base prerequisites. They just want to see, like you said, is this someone that I could stand, you know, that, that we have to take a trip to Toronto, go meet corporate, do whatever we have to do and come back. Am I going to enjoy this person's company? Does this person seem legit? If you can make them laugh and you can just make them comfortable with your presence, that's going to go a long way. Because when we say this, we're kind of assuming that you're going to be able to answer the questions. Most interviews really aren't that hard. As long as you you have a little bit of preparation, you have a little bit of understanding of of what's going on, and that you're actually qualified and competent for the job. Let's let's assume that you are. It's really going to come down to personality. Can will will you get them to like you? And that's one thing that I I see a lot when I do my interviews currently. It's sure it's entry level, so there's a lot less competency required. But what is required is do I think that you're going to be reliable? And do you, 
do you make me sound? Does it sound like I'm going to have to put a lot of effort into you? Does it sound like I'm going to have to, you know, keep on you and, and kind of watch your every move? And, and am I going to have to intervene a lot? So right. I understand it's different, say, like a, a higher up position versus an entry position. But you get so much of that from a person's confidence, from the slang, vocabulary, syntax, grammar that they're going to use, from their, from their ability to pick up on social cues. And, and that's really where you're going to get a lot of value from, from your ability to speak in an interview is just show that you can relate to another person. Yeah. Another way to put it to like you were describing is, are you too much of a work in progress, right? There's always places, there's always room for you to grow. And that's kind of what, you know, professional development is. Of course, they only want to hire is, you know, it's that vicious circle. We can't hire you because you don't have enough experience. But if you don't get any experience anywhere, because they all require experience, where are you going to get it? Um, everybody wants a certain amount of experience. Of course, they're accepting that you're going to learn a lot on the job, but they don't want to hire a work in progress. They don't want to hire a, a broken person that they have to try and fix. Yeah, exactly. And and part of that is really simple stuff, right? Don't interrupt them. Make good eye contact. When you're speaking to them, it's okay. Yeah, to isn't, little... it, isn't it annoying when people interrupt? Exactly. And see, I, I, I love that you use that example because what happens when, when you do interrupt? You kind of get this little emotional pang, right? It, it's really subtle, but you'll notice it. But the interviewers will definitely notice it. And that'll kind of be like a, a minus one in the scale of how you made them feel. So remove all those unnecessary minuses that you know you can control. So you know there'll be less negatives throughout the interaction and more room for, for, for the positives to hit properly. So stuff like that, like don't always focus on one interviewer. If you're always speaking to one person, the other ones are going to feel excluded, feel left out. It might even weird out the person that you're always talking to. It might make them seem like you're that in your mind, you think this is the important person in the room. So in other situations, you're only going to talk to the important person, you know, quote unquote, important person and not everyone else. So yeah. it's all these little social cues that you have to be aware of, but just comes from taking your time, just using natural, you know, social behavior that that you've learned throughout your life and just just going with it nice and easily so the next thing i would say about that actually is uh you just mentioned it is take your time so interviews are not a race uh yes you know the the interviewers have their time is important and treat it as as such however they would much rather come out of there with an interview that it was a, a little too long because you said a few too many things than not enough things because they can't create points for you if you didn't say, if you forgot to mention all the achievements you should have mentioned about your past experience. But if you said too many of them, they still have, the points are still there, right? They still have the evidence of what you're able to do. Uh, so that's the first thing is don't like, don't speak too fast. If when they ask you a question, don't be afraid to ask them to repeat the question while they are posing the question. You can write down, that's very acceptable in most interviews nowadays to write down the question or a few notes or stats that you have or things that you remember that have to do with the question, write those down. Even if it takes you 30 seconds between them asking you the question and you answering the question, that is perfectly acceptable and professional to do that. And if, if you wanted to hear it again, no problem, they will repeat it. Their job is to write down everything you're saying to award you points. It's the same thing for you. You have to be able to register properly what they're asking of you so that you can hit those points. And because they are writing down everything, if you speak a little bit slower and pause a little bit and even make it known, hey, did you have time to write everything down before I move on to my next point? They will very much appreciate that because you're making their life easier and they they understand that you understand the social dynamic that is going on. So if as simple as that, go through your sentences and say, even if you have another idea on the same topic for the same question, hey, is it okay if I if I continue? Would you like another moment to to write down what I just said? And if they say, "Oh no, thank you," then just proceed on. Right, uh, and it's don't feel like you have to answer the entire question in one paragraph, right? Like in in one breath, like uh, and when I finish the sentence, if I leave a, a a silence, it means I'm done answering the question. No, you can you know you can't remember absolutely everything. It's not a sprint in your head either. So 
say what you remember from, from that question, uh, and then take a breath and then go like, Oh, and another thing and another thing. And, and you can add on to your answer. It's not this thing where you have to say everything in one breath. Exactly. Uh, an- another thing you had written down, which I think is good too, is whatever the question may be start, unless they ask for a very specific example of something, Typically, try and start wide. Start your answer with a wide, wide answer, and a and finish with specific examples. Exactly, it, it's the same way you would tell a story. It's the same way that you you would bring someone through a sale. Is you're going to set the frame, set the context, and you're going to bring them through the journey. And what that allows is it it gets them to see your your thought process, and it gets and it brings them along. So you're you're leading them through what you're thinking. So they see everything and it'll be, it'll be comfortable to them. They won't feel like you're lying because it'll be very transparent. Anything else for the, uh, during the interview? Uh, just body language. Uh, yeah, that's of, a good one. Of course it is harder on, on the, 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 the virtual, uh, interviews to, to pull off, but just regular good body language. When you walk in, you walk in confidently. When you shake hands, you shake hands firmly. You look the people in the eye. When you sit, you don't slouch. When you move your head side to side, it's at a slow, controlled, comfortable pace. You're not you're not kind of like a rabbit in the forest, like scared that an owl or or something's going to jump at you. Your your head's on a swivel, but it's doing so slowly. And you don't re- act like prey. <laughs> exactly, you don't act like prey. Yeah. <laughs> and and realize that where your eyes go, there's importance. So if you choose to set your gaze on one of the interviewers, you are telling this person something. Now, if you choose to take your gaze off this person and put it onto another, you're choosing to tell this person something and understand the power of where your eyes go. And there, there's a lot of nonverbal in there, but it's these it's it's these deeper cues that they're really going to pick up on. And they're going to see that you are someone who understands social dynamics. And I can't stress that enough how far that goes in in any role that has to do with people, you want to demonstrate that you understand how to people. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Isn't it like 70 or 80% of, uh, of communication is done through nonverbal communication? I'll give you a dirty little secret of my job. Most of the time, I'm not paying attention to the words someone says. I'm paying attention to absolutely everything else. How this hmm. person is reacting to the, the person that's next to him. If the person kind of like twitched up a little bit, that's a red flag. This the first person might be lying. Am I? I, I see this person is is excited and, and frustrated at something. Are they frustrated because of what happened, or are they frustrated because of what they're not telling me? And it's all these. You you start to pick up on cues, and yes, the information is important because that's going to be like the objective things to to work with. But it's everything else surrounding that, the subcommunication, the body language, the eyes, the tonality, uh, all the, the context, the, the other people around. And we'll, we'll go deeper into that in, into another episode. But it's being able to s- kind of see the matrix for what it is and not get bogged down on just the words. Because if you only listen to the words, you're, you're not understanding the message. Yeah. Now, the, the last thing I'll say for body language is smile, right? Um, again, if you're not, if you're not a Casanova, if you're not able to pull off a joke in the middle of a stressful interview, the least you can do challenge for everybody is try and smile as much as you can during the interview between questions, any, anything like that. Typically a smile is met with another smile. So that's contagious. And, uh, it's all part of the, the charisma and the flirtation right between two people. And I'm not saying, I'm not talking about that in a sexual way necessarily. It can be done very professionally. But it's always a positive. Yeah, no, exactly. And if you kind of want that playful dynamic, and the more that you can introduce that, again, it's just pro-social behavior. You're making people feel good with your presence. And it's (laughs) like, I know that's what I've been harping on on this one, but it really goes so, so far. So after the interview or, or at the very end of the interview, what is left to do? Um. You want to, to exit on a happy note. That's the main thing. You want the last little interaction to be a positive one. So you want to thank them for their time. You want to thank each person. 
you want to to shake hands. If there is a little foible at some point, you might want to crack a little playful joke at it just to end on on a little like high emotional spike like that. Uh, and smiling, you know, wave on, on the way out sort of thing. Yeah, in some cases you could write a thank you email or you know, uh, always thank them for their ta- time. That's for sure. But there could be a follow up. It all depends on the job and, and the structure of their of their process. Sometimes it'll be like, no, we'll let you know. Thanks. Uh, but but a, a thank you, an extra thank you is never a bad thing. Well, I had a, an employee that I hired not too long ago who there's there's really no reason for them to, to email us after the the interview. But this person still took the time Hey, thank you, Jason and HR person for, for taking the time to speak with me. I really appreciate it, you know, that we, we got to connect and do an interview together. Please let me know if there's anything else, you know, looking forward to it. Cheers. And I, I already made up my mind about this person and we were going to hire him. But what that showed is this person has initiative. This person understands, you know, what people are looking for. And he's most likely that kind of guy that I'm not going to have to baby, that I'm not going to have to teach, you know, the basics to, that I won't be afraid to leave him alone on a department and that he's going to make a fool of himself. Like there, just that is already putting my mind at ease. I'm going to have to put less effort into this person than, than hopefully is needed. The fact that you already said we were already going to hire him anyways kind of tells you that he had probably nailed a lot of these tips and tricks already, right? He had exactly. probably checked a lot of those boxes, which is shows you he's the type of person that would send you an extra thank you. Did he actually say, and HR person? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I figured I I'd keep that one confidential. Yeah. That would have been funny. <laughs> Thanks, Jason and HR person. Dear HR lady. Because <laughs> often is that. It's like HR is just like, we need one HR person there, right? So there's always an <laughs> HR person in any interview now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Thanks, token HR person. Uh, the last thing, uh, I, I have to say, it's just, uh, part, kind of a few extra tips. They're not necessarily, uh, specific to a, you know, an order within, within the interview, but it's, if you're part of a company or, or an organization and you're looking to move up internally, know that you, uh, you may have an advantage because you're, you're from the, the inside and most people at the company know you, uh, things like that, but please be sure to not be the guy who applies at everything. In my old organization, there were people who were kind of notorious for doing that. And many of the bosses would be even like pretty outspoken about how they hated that. It shows that you're not very sincere. It shows that you, uh, <clears throat> you don't, nest- you, you, maybe you're confused. You don't make up your mind very well. Uh, and, and that you're just not willing to take your, your job and your future do- job seriously. It also shows uh, especially that you if you're not qualified. Stand- it shows that you don't have standards. Because you'll take anything other than what you have right now. It's the equivalent of going up to a group of girls and trying to flirt with all of them. Well, what's the impression that you're going to give? It's this guy will take anything that he can get. He doesn't actually want something. He wants anything. Yeah, I'd actually like to see that play out. It would probably be a train 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 wreck. wreck. (laughs) It'd be poorly. The guy would just get dismissed or laughed out or the girls would walk away. Like It would not go anywhere. Yeah, for sure. So it's the, it, it, you're right. That's a perfect analogy. It's the same thing. Uh, pick and choose wisely. It doesn't mean you can't apply to, you know, several jobs in the same organization, but make sure you're qualified for them. Make sure they make sense. Make sure that n- know that HR and all other execs and managers, depending on the size of the company, will know that you applied yet again. Right? If you're that guy, oh, this guy applied again. Can you can you believe it? Uh, they they won't hire you. And the more you do that, the, the less the less your your chances are of, of getting of moving up in that corporation or company. Uh, anything else on your end? No, I, I think I think we provide some value there. Um, but if ever you have any questions or you're, you're kind of unsure, reach out to us. You know, maybe we can even set up like a little Skype call, do a mock interview with you if you want to practice. If you know you have something coming up. So we'll uh, give you some easy questions, some hard questions, take a look at your body language, your tonality, that sort of thing. You know, if there's some interest in there, just shoot us a, a message and we'll we'll see what we can do. Yeah, for sure. That's a, that's a great idea. So, and by the way, where you guys can reach us, uh, 
We have our Gmail at the.indie.mindset at gmail.com. You can also find us on our Instagram at The Independent Mindset. And of course, uh, listen to our podcast anywhere where podcasts are found, mainly Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So thanks a lot, guys. That was another episode of The Independent Mindset. Cheers. Cheers.